Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala Amma ba'du Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah MashaAllah everybody is refreshed after Salatul Asha May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept Amin ya Rabbil Alameen Continuing So just to recap the few bullet points One A glimpse of the journey to Jannah is the journey to Hajj Two when to perform Hajj? When you are able to do so. Not at the old age or not when you attain certain uh, worldly things or not after you get married and so on and so forth. Before, while you are preparing for Hajj, you have to make Tawbah and you have to set yourself free from any transgressions with any other human being. If there is any debts, if there is any uh, material things that you have in the possessions of somebody else, make sure that this is written and there are witnesses for that. You are now in the journey and you took off your regular clothes, your makhid, you put on your haram clothes for men, it's the, it's the rida and the izar and the slippers that don't go up to your ankles. And for the women, it's the regular clothes, except naqab, the face mask, and the gloves, if they wear that. And you said by your tongue, together with the intention in your heart, to start Umrah, or to enter the state of Ihram. Most of us will do Hajj, Tamattu, so you have to do the Umrah first. And we, and, and we were talking about just before Salatul Isha, what are the things that the muhrim cannot do? There are many things. You cannot take from your hair, take from your nails. The scholars scaled up or measured up the nails to the hair. Unless you follow the Zahiri school of thought of Ibn Hazm, then you can take from your nails. But don't, uh, don't get confused. You cannot take from your nails. Okay? Uh, this is the, the, the accepted opinion. Uh, you cannot perform marriage, you cannot get married, you cannot have intercourse with your wife, you cannot put plebe, you cannot put perfumes, uh, oils and scents, you cannot do that while in a state of ihram. However, you can do that before, before entering the state of ihram, you can do that, but while in the state of ihram, you cannot do that. You can take showers, you can rub your head, but, and if hair falls, it's fine, because this is not intentional, cutting from your hair. You cannot take from your beard in ihram or outside of ihram. You have to grow your beard. This is mandatory per 99% of scholars. This is the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. It's mandatory. Only the late scholars of al-Shafi'iyyah, whom يعني, some of them took it from the mandatory to the highly recommended. Um, what else? You um, cannot wear a shema, a ghutra, or a kufi on your head. An umbrella is fine. The ceiling of your car or the plane or the vehicle is fine. Uh, a woman cannot wear her face mask, niqab, or glove. However, she can make isdal from her clothes on her face and her hands to cover if there are men around. If she, if she normally does that, like Sayyidah Aisha, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with her, used to do. Um, do not put tleeb on the ihram clothes. Do not put tleeb on the ihram uh, scents and oils and uh, uh, nice smells on the, the ihram clothes. Um, you cannot hunt while in the state of ihram. And you also cannot take from the trees and the plants of Al Haram, the holy house in Mecca. Uh, nor that you can hunt any animal, nor actually aid or help in hunting by pointing or something like that. You cannot also bug any animals or creatures that are in the haram. You, you just leave them alone. You cannot do like shh and so on and you know, make them go away. You cannot do that. You just leave them alone. Right. Now that you, khalas, you said labbayka umrah or Allahumma labbayka umrah, you entered the state of haram, you arrived in Jiddah, alhamdulillah. You are, you, obviously, you're going to go to the hotel first. You're going to take your luggage and put it in the hotel. Immediately, you will go to Al-Masjid Al-Haram. 
When you enter the masjid, as you enter any masjid, you have to enter with your right foot. And, and you say the normal dhikr when you enter any masjid, Bismillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. أعوذ بالله العظيم وبوجهه الكريم وسلطانه القديم من الشيطان الرجيم اللهم افتح لي أبواب رحمتك Normal day Remember that once you said لبيك عمرة Till the moment you see الكعبة in front of your face You are doing talbiyah You are doing talbiyah What is the format of talbiyah? The صيغة لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك La sharika lak. And you repeat that. And you repeat that. When you stand up, when you sit down, when you make any, you do the talbiyah at all times. Up until you see Al Kaaba in front of your eyes, you stop the talbiyah. And you will start performing your umrah. And you will start performing your umrah. Al Kaaba is like a cube. It's like it's a cube basically which is a square in three dimensions. One quarter is that corner that has the black stone, al-hajar, al-aswad. You start your circumambulation, tawaf, from that corner. The ideal case, which most likely you will not get to do, I'll be very yani, forthright with you, uh, we've all been through it, yani, for those who went to hajj, uh, the ideal case is that you will go and touch tastalim al hajar you will touch al hajar with your right hand and kiss it and start you know your first shout your first tawaf by saying bismillah allahu akbar that's the ideal situation what's going to most likely happen is that you are going to maybe touch the black stone with something else like a, like a stick or a handkerchief or something like that because you're not going to be able to reach it and do not la tuzahim la tuzahim do not move yourself into the crowd this is not from the etiquettes of hajj you will get hurt and you will hurt other people you will get harmed and you will harm Especially women, I saw in front of my eyes a woman who was so adamant, so adamant to go and touch and kiss the black stone and she was basically squished and squeezed between the men and finally she, she arrived there and then how can she get out? The men carried her up, 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 up until she was, you know, taken from... This is, this is not Islamic, ya ikhwani. Especially sisters do not get in with the men. Touching and all that stuff, this is this haram. You're in Hajj. So do not la tuzahim, do not force your, your way, you know, in the people. Do not do that. If you can reach it, alhamdulillah. If you cannot, if you can touch it with a stick or a handkerchief or something, that's fine. Then you would kiss that stick or kiss that handkerchief. If you touched it, with it. If you did not, you will simply point towards it. You point towards it, and you will not kiss your hand. This is a widely known mistake. You, would, you know, people would point to it and then kiss their hand. This is not from the sunnah. If you are pointing at it, you didn't touch it, you do not kiss your hand. You just point at it, and say, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, and you will start your first shout, your first tawaf, your first circumambulation. Now, you will go counterclockwise. Your left-hand side, your heart, is near the Kaaba, counterclockwise, CCW. Tayyib, in that whole tawaf, you are doing what is called al-ilb tiba' al-ilb tiba' which is a style. It's, it's the fashion in your ihram. You are revealing your right shoulder. So you are putting your ihram in such a way that you are putting the right part of your rida' under under, and you are, you know, um, what's, the, what's the thing? Yeah, and you are uh, clipping it from under your right arm so that you are revealing your right shoulder to show strength to, and manhood as the Prophet والسلام, did. You will do al ittiba' this style, this fashion in ihram is called al ittiba' and this is, you will do in all of that tawaf, in all seven circumambulations, you will do that. 
in the first three shout or the يعني, uh, the, uh, the first three circumambulations you will do what is called a rommel and a rommel some people mistake it for running no you're not gonna run you are gonna imitate running it's like you know moving your body like as if you're running but the steps are short the the intervals of your steps are are short so it's kind of like you know al jari fil fil makan something something that it's it's an imitation of running but it's not running so do not run again you're going to harm others and harm yourself <clears throat> so this is a ramal this is in the first three circumambulations the remaining four you just walk each and every time you pass by the black stone if you, if you can touch it kiss it say allahu akbar and continue alhamdulillah if you cannot touch it with something and kiss it say allahu akbar and move on if you cannot most likely which what's going to happen you're going to just point at it say allahu akbar and move on you you do seven of those right the corner which is right before the black stone corner is called al rukn al yamani al rukn al yamani between these two corners between al rukn the Yamani corner and the black stone corner, it is recommended to say, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa khina adab al You do the, that tawaf, <coughs> and once you are done with that, with that tawaf, then you will unclip your rida and cover your right shoulder. And clip it back, and this is the only tawaf in which you will do this style of ihram in. Otherwise, you're always covered, your two shoulders are always covered. Again, that's a common mistake because people think that in, in the other tawaf you, you also do this. No, it's only in that first tawaf in which you are doing your umrah in. If you have not done umrah before, then this will be your Umratul Islam and also Umrat at tamattu It will be Umratul Islam and Umrat at tamattu as well for the Hajj. Both. You finished your Tawaf, you did the seven circumambulations, you covered your right shoulder, you will go behind Maqam Ibrahim and find a nice spot and pray your two rakat. Sunnat al Tawaf. What if you cannot find a spot behind Maqam Ibrahim? Find any other spot in the masjid, in the haram. What if you cannot find any other spot? Even scholars said you can go and pray it in your hotel room. I will tell you from experience, you will find a spot. You will find one. Just look and you'll be able to find one. Just pray your turaka. After that, you can go if possible, again, if you can, untouch the black stone and kiss it again. Again, that's if you, if you can do that. You can go to drink from the Zamzam water at that point. And يعني, normally, this is the advice. Drink as much as you can from Zamzam water over there. It's free. It's available. In Mecca and Medina, drink as much as you can. Ma'u Mubarak, it's blessed water. The Prophet ﷺ said, it is nutrition. It is nutritious. This water is nutritious. Just in itself. It is nutritious and it is shifa and you can drink it for whatever intention that you want to drink it for. Then you will go for, for the side. Remember, tawaf is just like salah. The only exception is that you can speak. Like what to say during tawaf. Some people really burden themselves. They carry a book with them and they start reading from the book or somebody says out loud some, you know, some dhikr and they repeat after. Do not do that. Just make dhikr from your heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and just make dua, read Quran, make dhikr, whatever that comes to your mind and heart. You, don't, you, you do not have to open a book. You do not have to repeat you know, after someone. You do not have to do any of that stuff. Some people also will 
uh, for example, the first shout, they say this dhikr. The second shout, they say, uh, you know, one other particular and so on. There is no sunnah as far as that is concerned at all. You just make dhikr in general, you, you recite Quran, you make dua, whatever comes to your mind from the sunnah of the Prophet and the dua that we know from the Prophet as simple as that. Once you're done with that and you pray your two rak'at, you, and you can go and you know, drink from Zamzam water at that point, then you can, then you will go to, uh, to make the sa'i between al-safa and al-marwa. Now we said tawaf is just like salah, so you have to have tahara and wudu. The only exception or difference between tawaf and salah is that you, is that you can speak during tawaf, but you cannot speak during salah. You cannot talk during salah. However, a sa'i between al safa and al marwa is not like tawaf and it's not like salah. Actually, you do not have to have wudu, you, you do not have to have tahara to start with to make sa'i between al safa and al but it is better to have tahara obviously and have wudu, but if you don't, you can still do a sa'i between al safa and al marwa without that. You will go on the Mount of al safa and it's better to stand on the Mount and you will still see, see remains of a Safa mountain up to this day. You'll stand on that and, and you'll say, Inna Safa wal Marwata min Sha'airillah. And you face the Qibla, which is the Kaaba. And remember, at that, at that spot, the Qibla changes, you know, drastically when you move any short distance. So it's whatever the Kaaba is, whatever you see the Kaaba is, this is the Qibla. In Mecca, you know, actually in, in hotel rooms and apartments and so on and so forth, each and every room, you look in the ceiling and you'll find a different direction of Qibla by an arrow. Because the proximity is so near from the Kaaba, the Qibla changes, you know, from room to room. So you'll face the Kaaba and you'll make a particular dhikr and you'll make dua after the dhikr and you will repeat that three times. Then you will start going um, from al safa to al marwa from al safa to al marwa Tayyib. Um, once you arrive at al marwa again, you're going to stand up on the mount of al marwa and you will uh, make dhikr and make dua and then you will go back to as safa From as safa to Marwa is one shout. From Marwa to safa is one shout. You will do seven of them. So you will end where? In safa or Marwa? Huh? Marwa. You will end at Marwa. Once you're done with the sa'i, and obviously there is, there, is a, there is two, nowadays there is two green marks in the ceiling, two green lights. Between these two green lights, you will go faster. Run, basically. But running is only for men, not for women. Running is only for men, not for women, because that's a mistake. You see women running between the two green lines. They, they're not supposed to run. It's only for men. So you run between these two green marks, and you walk the rest before that and after that. You do the seven you will end at Marwa. Once you're done with that, you will find the barber shops right there. Just take a few steps down, you, you'll find the barber shops. Then you will either shave completely or you will you know, make taqseer, which is to shorten your hair. But if you're going to shorten your hair, you have to shorten from all around. From, from all around, just like shaving. It is better because this is Umrat at Tamattu, so you'll do Hajj after that. It's better to shorten your hair at this point and wait for the shaving until you perform the Hajj. Once you did that, your Umrah is done. Khalas. Then you go back to your hotel, you, uh, you take a shower, you wear your normal clothes, your thobes, your pants, your shirts. Life is back to normal. And you will enjoy your, your, your time and your life basically going to the Haram and enjoying the Kaaba and everything throughout all of the days remaining up until the eighth day of Dhul Hijjah. That's why it's called Hajj at Tamattu, the enjoyable Hajj because of that. You do your Umrah first, then you, you exit the state of Ihram, you, you're fine, you're wearing your normal clothes, yani, uh, 
even one can, you know, can enjoy his wife and so on, up until the eighth day of Dhul Hijjah. On the eighth day of Dhul Hijjah, which is Yawm at tarwiyah Yawm at tarwiyah and again, yani, if you look at it, really Hajj and Umrah is, is, is so easy. Yani, the, the exact rituals that you have to do are so easy and they're so little. On the eighth day of Dhul Hijjah, it depends on where you are. If you went to Mecca first, most likely you'll be in Medina or coming from Medina at that time. So you'll make a haram um, of the Hajj from Dhul Hulayfa, which is the miqat of the people of Medina. If you went to Medina first, most likely before the day, before the eighth day, you will be in Mecca already. So you will make haram from wherever you are, from the hotel, from wherever you are in, in Mecca. On the eighth day, <coughs> you should go to Mina, Yawm at tarwiyah You should go to Mina sometime before Dhuhr or after Dhuhr. Uh, here is yani, something. What if you is going to Mina on Yawm at tarwiyah Rukn? It's a pillar of Hajj? No, it's not. Is it wajib? No. It's not wajib either. What if you cannot do it, period? Do you have to sacrifice? No. But you, you, but you should do it. Because the Prophet did it, but it's not wajib and it's not rukn either. And, it's, and, and if you miss it, there's no sacrifice for it. There's no damn blood that you have to sacrifice uh, for it. Ideally, your group will go. Practically, you will go to Mina on the eighth day of Dhul Hijjah sometime before Dhuhr or after Dhuhr. Before that, and in the morning of the eighth day, you will again prepare yourself to make ihram for hajj. Take off your regular clothes, put on your ihram clothes, and again you can take a shower if you can. It's sunnah, it's not mandatory to take a shower. You can put scents and everything before you say, and before you have the intention and say and utter the intention of labbayk hajjan or Allahumma labbayk hajjan. Once you say that, you are in a state of ihram, and the things that become prohibited upon you, just like we said earlier, become prohibited upon you. Then you go to Mina. In Mina, you, you basically reach your t tents there. Uh, I think it's still tents till now. I'm not sure if have they built any hotels in Mina. As far as I know, it's still tents. And it's nice, comfortable, air-conditioned tents, mashallah. You reach your tent and you pray Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, and Fajr of the ninth day of Dhul Hijjah. You pray, you pray uh, uh, these salawat, these prayers, qasr but not jama, qasr but not jam, shortening but not combining, except obviously maghrib and fajr, they're not shortened. What are you doing? You're doing nothing, you're just there. On the ninth day, which is the day of Arafah, you pray fajr in Mina, in your tent, with your group, and then you wait for the buses to go to Araf. Piece of advice. Do not walk to Arafah. Do not walk to Arafah. I walked to Arafah. And I know how bad it was. Once you reach the, uh, the, uh, the edge or the, the, the border of Arafah, it's chaos. I was hurt and it was so bad. So just wait for the buses. They will come. They will take you to Arafah. Uh, do not say, I'm going to just immediately after fetch, start walking to Arafah. Don't do that. Just wait in your tent for the buses to come. And again, whenever possible, do not try to walk. It's a waste time of effort. Waste, yeah, and it's wasting time, wasting effort. Uh, uh, you will get lost easy. All the tents look like each other. You know, it's everybody's dressed in the same way. So you'll get lost easy and it's stress. You will waste time. Instead, sit in the air-conditioned tent and read Quran and make dua and do something useful. This is my advice based on experience, okay? So, uh, wait for the buses, they will take you to Arafah. Once you reach Arafah, ideally, ideally, you will reach before Dhuhr, before Zawal, and you will stay in Namira, in Namira until Dhuhr. Ideally, most likely this is not gonna happen because you will reach at Dhuhr or after Dhuhr, Arafah, so you'll go directly to where your group is in Arafah. Once you go there, <coughs> Once you go there, um, there will be a, yani, 
a khutbah, a short khutbah, a short sermon by the group leader, uh, should explain the rights of that day and the following days and so on and so forth. And then you pray dhuhr and asr at the time of dhuhr with one adhan and two, and two iqama, two, two, shorten and combine. And then you'll stay the whole day in Araf. So you have from dhuhr until maghrib, sitting there, doing what? Making dua and making dhikr, or, and or reciting Quran. Here's a practical advice, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Allah, I, I, yani, I saw these things with my own eyes. Do not go chit-chat by the bathrooms and smoke cigarettes. I saw that. Women doing that. Do not try to take pictures on top of camels and smile, you know, for the picture while you are mounting the camel. You're not there to waste your time in that. Do not try to mount, you know, the mountain there of Ar Rahmah. Do not try. Just sit there, face the Qibla. If, if you can face both the mountain and the Qibla, fine. If you can face just the Qibla, fine. Focus. This is the most important day of your Hajj. This is the day, the most day in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees his slaves from the hellfire. Do not waste it in chatting, do not waste it in joking, do not waste it in taking pictures on top of camels. That stuff happens, I'm not making this up. Do not waste your time. Just sit there, focus, focus. And make sure you do that because shaitan becomes so diminished on that day, so much, so try your best to, يعني, to make shaitan even more diminished. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us off to his angels on that day. You will stay in Arafah until Maghrib. Until Maghrib. Until the sun sets. This is the sunnah of the Prophet Once the sun sets, you will leave again with your group, with your buses to Muzdalif. Once you reach Muzdalifa, what are you going to do? Gather the stones. No, you're not going to gather the stones. You're going to first pray Maghrib and Isha combined and shortened. Whether at the time of Maghrib or at the time of Isha depends on the time when you will reach there. I know there's a very short distance, but 5 million people in the same time using the same buses, you will reach there probably at the time of Isha. That's fine. You'll pray Maghrib and Isha, Maghrib 3, Isha 2 by one Adhan and two Iqamas, and you'll sleep. Spend the night. Most likely, you will get sick that night because you are sleeping bil There's no hotels. There is no. You just have your sleeping bag or whatever, and you're just sleeping, you know, there. And you're wearing your ihram clothes. You remember, you're in a state of ihram. You're tired. Ash'ath aghbar, shu'atan ghubra. You are in a terrible situation, and you will get sick that night because of the cold air, you know, passing by your neck and throat. You'll get sick. I, I, I got sick myself. For the following Fajr, which is Yawm al nahr which is for everybody else around the world, Yawm Al-Eid. Everybody's enjoying around the world Al-Eid, toys, balloons, you know, getting together, praying Salat Al-Eid, and you are in a different world. You are in so bad of a shape, your ihram is probably not, not even clean at that point. And you are sick, most likely, flu and cold and all viruses and all kinds of stuff. And you're barely making it. And this is Yawm al It's a very important day for you, right after the day of Arafah. And remember, Al-Hajj Arafah. Arafah is a rukn. You cannot miss Arafah. In Muzdalifah, after praying Fajr, in Muzdalifah, you make dhikr. You don't have to go to Al Mash'ar. Because the Prophet said, وَجَمْعٌ كُلُّهَا مَوْقِفْ أي مُزْدَلِفَ كُلُّهَا مَوْقِفْ So all of Muzdalifa is a place to stand. So you'll stand there as, as the Prophet did, and you'll make dhikr, and you'll make dua after Salat al Fajr. Basically, you're waiting for your buses to come and take you to where? To Mina again. Before leaving, you can pick up the, the seven little small stones. 
And I'm emphasizing on that. There are seven little, small stones, each of which is by the size of al hummus, the chickpea, smaller than that even. You know al hummus? Very small. It's not these. It's not these. If you can, if you can hold it by your hand, it should be held by your fingers, not by your hand. If you can hold it by your hand, it's not the right size. And you're not stoning shaitan. Shaitan is not standing there. You're not stoning shaitan. You are doing it ta'atun lil rahman, obeying al rahman, obeying Allah subhanahu wa taala. So people get emotional. They get carried away. They start cussing. They start saying stuff. They start. I saw somebody throwing his shoe. Throwing a, a, a shoe, he had it somewhere in his bag, and Allahu Akbar. And people revealing their sins. You hear people revealing their sins at that point. Yeah, Shaitan, you are the one that made me do this and do that. Yeah, Akhi, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala covered you. Why? And they are exposing themselves. It's haram. It's haram. So don't get carried away. Don't get. You're not stoning. Shaitan is not standing there. You're doing that ta'atun li rahma obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're getting your seven little stones by the size of al-hummus, al-hummus, the chickpea, or even smaller. You can hold it with your fingers, not with your hand. Okay? And you'll reach Muzdalfa by the buses again. There is about a few things that you have to do on that day in order to exit the state of ihram. One is that you need to stone those seven little stones at Jamrat Al-Aqaba Al-Kubra, which is the one closer to Mecca, which is the one closer to Mecca. You will stone. And here's a practical tip on how to stone, okay? You need to learn how to duck, really. You need to learn how to duck. The way to stone, practically. I will, well, yeah, I'm saying this for you, from experience because you will get hit. You will get hit, and you will get hit bad because most people pick up those big stones, and maybe they are throwing shoes and other stuff. Okay, so you just stand there, and you know, and duck, and Allahu Akbar, and and stone. Your aim is for the stone to enter the target. It doesn't have to hit the pole. It doesn't have to hit the pole. As long as it enters the target, it's fine. Whatever enters the target and then bounces back out, it's fine. As long as it enters the target, it doesn't have to hit the pole. It just needs to enter the target. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. You throw your seven stones at Jamrat Al-Aqaba Al-Kubra, which is the one closer to Mecca. Then you have to sacrifice. Most likely you're not going to sacrifice by your own hands. Most likely your travel agency or there you're going to do it with a Rajhi or some other you know, charitable organizations. Uh, that do the sacrificing for you, it's a hundred riyal or something like that, they would be sacrificing for you. Some agencies will bring actually some of that meat for you, cooked already to eat. If, if that happened, khair. If not, inshallah khair. So the, the sacrifice will happen on your behalf. You should get notified that the sacrifice happened, that nahr al-hadi happened. Then you will shave your head at that point. If you haven't shaved your head, zero, ever in your life, it's a very nice feeling, let me tell you. It's a different feeling, yeah. To, to touch your head and feel that it's, uh, there's no hair. Very different feeling. Uh, so you stoned, you, you sacrificed, you shaved your head. If you do these three things, you have what is called a tahallul al awwal the first tahallul. You exited the state of ihram pretty much completely, but not complete yet. You can wear your normal clothes now, you know, you can put scents, you can put, and everything except women. You cannot approach your wife yet. You cannot approach your wife yet in, in an intimate fashion, you know? unless you do the fourth thing, which is Tawaf al ifada Tawaf of the ifada and a sa'i between Safa and Marwa again, which is that of Hajj. You did the Tawaf and you did the sa'i for the Umrah when you first came because you're doing Hajj Tamattu. Now you're doing Tawaf al ifada which is a Rokn. This is a pillar of, this is a pillar of Hajj. 
you, you, so after that, you went to, to your tent, you changed your clothes, you, you're wearing your thobe, you're putting sense, you're, you're, alhamdulillah, everything's fine. You're still tired and dragging big time at that point. You're going back to Mecca to do tawaf al ifadah on that same day, which is Yawm al -Nahr. You did tawaf al ifadah again, in the same way that you did the first tawaf. You start from the corner of the black stone, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. If you can touch it and kiss it, good. If you cannot, you'll touch it with something, you'll kiss it. If not, you just point to it seven times between the Yamani quarter and the Blackstone quarter. You will say, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa khina adab al-nawr. You finish your tawaf, you will go behind the maqam and pray your two raka'at. You can drink from the zamzam water at that point. Again, if after yani pray the two raka'at, you can go back to the Blackstone and touch it and kiss it, it's fine. If you cannot, inshallah. Fine, then you will go do the sa'i between Safa and Al Marwa in the same way that you did uh, before uh, walking fast or running where you're supposed to run and walking when you're supposed to walk. You're done with your sa'i, then you did the four things that you need to do on that day, you are back to Mina. And you have the complete tahallul now. You have the complete tahallul. You exit the state of ihram completely. When you're back to Mina, then the following day is the first day of Ayyam at Tashriq, or in another terminology, the second day of Eid. Again, it's different terminology, don't get confused. Ayyam at Tashriq start from the 11th day of Dhul Hijjah. So the first day is the second day of Eid, which is the first day of Ayyam al -Tashir. It's just a different terminology. There are three days. All what you're doing in those days, you're living your life normally, except for the fact that every single day, every single day, after the Adhan of Dhuhr, after the Adhan of Dhuhr, after Zawal, and, and the reason why it's called Zawal, by the way, if you, if you don't know, because the sun at the time when it's midday, it's not 12 noon, the real midday is directly perpendicular in the sky. Zawal means it started to move. Once it starts to move, it's called Zawal, and this is the time of Dhuhr, Salat al Dhuhr, when it starts moving, when it starts Zawal. After the time of Zawal, you will go and stone seven, seven, seven. The three stoning areas. Seven, seven, seven. Where are you gonna get the stones? From Mina. From Mina. And don't worry, plenty of stones. You are not gonna find any problem finding stones. And again, they are by the size of a chickpea, a hummus, or smaller. You can hold it with your fingers. And again, you do it in the same professional way of ducking so as not to get hit, because I got hit uh, and it wasn't that pleasant. So, alhamdulillah, you do your stoning 777. Now here is a very important piece of advice. Most travel agencies, and this is a big problem, they want you to do what is called ta'ad, you know, ta'ad. To leave Mina in the second day of Ayyam al-Tashriq and not wait for the third day. And that's fine, it's halal, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَمَنْ تَعَجَّلَ فَلَا إِتْمَ عَلَيْهُ وَمَنْ تَأَخَرَ the Prophet والسلام, stayed for the third day, which is better. But if your travel agency tells you that you know, we, we, we'll go early, it's fine. You need to leave Mina before Maghrib. You need to leave Mina before, before Maghrib on the second day of Ayyam al Tashriq. But here is the dilemma. And it's a dilemma. Because remember that you have to stone when? When? Huh? After Zawal after Zawal for that day. So for that day, for every day, you have to start stoning after Zawal. You can do the stoning from after Zawal until Fajr or even Dhuhr of the following day for previous day, not for the coming day. Okay? This is a very important point. Now there you will find a lot of fatawa from people saying it's okay, you can do Dhuhr 24-7, before Dhuhr, after Dhuhr, it's fine. Don't listen to that. I'm telling you. The Sunnah of the Prophet the established Sunnah, you can, you can only do the stoning 
after Zawal for that day. And you have from after Zawal until Fajr, even Dhuhr of the following day for that day, so you have plenty of time. You can go 3 a.m., 2 a.m., you will find nobody there in the stony area, you can stone him, khala. finished. But do not go before Zawal on the day that you're supposed to leave from Mina to stone for that day before Zawal, for that day, just to accommodate your travel agency. No. Do not do that. They want to save on money or hotels or whatever, do not do that. We're not going to bend the religion, the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, to accommodate, you know, worldly matters. So remember that. Because I remember there was a huge deal, you know, in the whole you know, group that I was in. And the Sunnah is clear. And I told them, we're going to go there at the first yani, stoning uh, uh, area and wait for the Adhan of the Wallahi, this is the, and this is what I did. Wait for the Adhan of the Once I heard the Adhan, you can start stoning. Three, seven, seven, seven. Go back to Mina. Pack your stuff. And, you know, be ready to, to leave to the airport and so on and so forth. But do not throw before Zawal. Do not throw before Zawal. Once you did that and you stoned the 777, My time is up, he's, he's telling me. Uh, once you stoned the 777 on the second day, and if your travel agency is making you leave early, that's fine. You will leave before Maghrib. You have to leave a minute from Maghrib. And you will perform Tawaf al Wada', the farewell Tawaf, in Mecca, in the same way that you did you know, the other Tawaf before. Again, in your normal clothes and everything. It's really good and handy to. I'm not sure if they still allow you to enter in the airport here with the big jugs of Zamzam water, but if you can fill, you know, from the, you know, from the Zamzam water and bring it with you, um, your Hajj is done, and it's, yani, it's that easy. If you get confused in anything over there, the nice thing is that they have they have uh, these small um, booths uh, like. Uh, Booths or yani small little like you know like small little shops almost. There's a sheikh sitting inside there. You ask them you know whatever you need from questions and they will tell you what to do. Mashallah, this is yani everywhere in Mina. You'll find them yani. So if you get confused in anything, you'll be able to to do that. Uh, if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Uh, that concludes the rights of Umar and Hajj. Again, it's easy, very easy. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala accept from us and make us go each and every year ameen rabbil alamin subhanak allahumma bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik jazakumullahu khairan for your attentive ear